Thank you, guests and distinguished Toastmasters, Toastmasters for coming through tonight's meeting. Now, how many people here by a show of hands have ever wanted to be famous? Anybody? Yeah, see, we have a little bit in common. I've always wanted to be famous from an early age. That's what Icebreaker is about, finding stuff that you have in common with people in the club. So from an early age, unfortunately, I was not a evil in kid. I just smiled a lot, and I was shy. I kept to myself. But I did have a desire to be at the forefront, the center of attention. And I found this out a couple of different ways, from visiting summers with my dad and giving speeches in high school. But somewhere along the way, I missed shots on opportunities that I had presented to me. And I gave up that dream of being famous and went on to other opportunities, you know, like going to college, getting a job, paying bills on time. And becoming famous was just a dream that I never really got back around to getting to. So first off, when I was a kid, about 11 or so, I was visiting my dad for the summer. My dad is in the Air Force. Well, yes, he was. He was. He's retired now. But we spent our summers in different cities, wherever he was stationed at. This particular time was in Moreno Valley at an Air Force base. And it was about an hour and 30 minutes away from Hollywood, California. So one weekend, my dad woke me and my brother up. He was like, we're going to Universal Studios. Get your bags ready and let's go. I was like, yes. I was like, let's do this. I'm so excited. Let's go to Universal Studios and have some fun. Now, the main reason we went there is that we were all Star Trek fans. If you don't know what Star Trek is, that's OK. It has a lot of TV shows and movies about it. And if you're a fan of it, it's probably one of the most nerdiest things you can be a fan of besides <laughs> Doctor Who. But it's a fun show. We all love it. We wanted to go to this attraction they had there called the Star Trek Adventure. Now, it wasn't a ride or anything, it was just a show. We were thinking that we would get there, maybe meet somebody famous like William Shatner or Patrick Stewart and have a good time, get to know about Star Trek inside information. But that isn't what it was at all. About the first 20 people who stood in line got to be a part of the show and film their own Star Trek episode. When we found this out, we were overjoyed and excited. So much. We were doing it with joy, just filling up. And so we were, we were getting in there. They gave us these casting sheets. We fill out our name. And me, being an 11 year old, I thought it was funny to put my name as Hotshot. For <laughs> reference, this was 1994. Hot Shots just came out, which is a funny movie if you haven't seen it. I thought it was hilarious. My dad didn't think so, so. But we're getting there filming the casting sheets and they show us the uniforms. I got to put on the Star Trek outfit that was official. I was like, oh, I'm looking good. We got to go to the set. There was a whole Starship Enterprise. The, you know, the whole seat with the captain's chair and the control stations. I was, I was overjoyed. I couldn't think. I was so happy. I just kept smiling. As y'all know, I like to smile a lot. <laughs> smiling is great. It's a great way to improve your mood. But sometimes it's not the best thing to do. When I first sat down in the chair, they had me up front. So I was just sitting in this little commander's chair, pressing buttons, <laughs> so happy. The director was like, calm me down a little bit, you'll be all right. I'll try to keep a straight face. Didn't really happen. I was too excited. So I got my Star Trek out the door, and I'm on, on the, I'm on the ship. Like, oh man, this is like going to be amazing. I couldn't think straight. So we're filming a couple little basic scenes. Then we get to the scene where the missile attacks the starship. I don't know if you've ever seen a Star Trek episode, but when that happens, they shake the camera and the people move side to side. <laughs> and you're supposed to move in the direction that the camera's moving. And everybody was doing that behind me in sync. Me, I was too excited. <laughs> I was sitting in the front like this, just smiling, <laughs> going back and forth. And the director just kept going on. He's like, I got a lot of stuff to do today. That's fine, that's the scene. I was so excited, I didn't think about it. We got the little VHS tape to go back and watch at the house. And my dad was like, I'm disappointed. And I was like, why? He's like, well, he killed hot shot on the sheet. And then when he just, <laughs> just smiled the whole time, he weren't seen. Like maybe he had an opportunity to get discovered, but you might have missed it. And that's when I realized I had an opportunity. I may have missed a shot to become famous like I wanted to. Now, in high school, I was working on my speech, because I had problems as far as speaking. I had speech in at an early age. So my junior year, I was supposed to give a speech for Black History Month in front of the whole school. And my topic was uh, George Washington Carver. If you don't know, he's a scientist, 
way back in the day, did a lot of stuff with cross-pollinating with peanuts. He didn't invent peanut butter, but he did a lot of good stuff. My opening line was supposed to be, I'm George Washington Carver, and I was the first black scientist. But I was very nervous in front of everybody in school. So instead I said, my name is George, George Washington Carver, the first black president. And everybody laughed. It was 1998. Nobody thought that was going to happen. And at first I felt a little embarrassed. Like, Man, everybody was laughing at me. But then it took me a couple of seconds. I'm like, no, this is different. People are laughing with me because they didn't want to come at this point assembly. And I just made them have a moment of joy. And I liked that feeling. And I chased it for a little while. But as things do in life, I lost it a little bit, lost track, started doing other things, and working on other skills. It wasn't until I finally came to Toastmasters previously, about two years ago, that I realized I had skills I've neglected, but I haven't worked on them at all. I have lost that dream of becoming famous. And it doesn't necessarily have to be famous. You may just want to be successful in life, do something for your job. You always have to keep working on skills and develop new skills so you can go out and be famous. Thank you.